Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to show you is how we can write any of these terms here in the form ax to the power n by using the indice rules that you see up here. And writing these kind of terms in the form ax to the power n is going to be something that you're going to need to do if you get to do differentiation or integration of terms like these. Okay, well let's start first of all with 1 over x to the power 4. Well, 1 over x to the power n, as you can see up here, is identical to x to the power minus n. So in this example, n is the 4. Alright, so we can write this as x to the power minus 4. So if I had, say, 1 over x to the power 5, that's going to be x to the minus 5, and 1 over x squared, x to the minus 2, and so on. Now, in this next example, what I've done is not have 1 over a value, a power of x, but you can see I've changed it now to a 2. So, when we're dealing with something like this, we can think of this as 2 times 1 over x to the power 5. Well, we've already seen that 1 over x to the power 5 can be thought of as x to the minus 5 by this rule. So what we've got is 2 times x to the minus 5, which is 2x to the minus 5. We can drop the time sign. And with practice, you should be able to go from here directly to this stage here without writing this line in. If we had 3 over x to the 5, it would be 3x to the minus 5. If we had, say, 5 over x to the 6, it would be 5x to the minus 6 and so on. Okay, now in this example what you'll see I've done now is I've got a number in the denominator. So let's see how we handle this one. Quite often I see a lot of mistakes with this kind of thing. Now it says 3 all over 5x to the 4 but we can think of this as 3 fifths multiplied by 1 over x to the power 4. 1 over x to the power 4, well again from this rule, it's going to be x to the minus 4. So we can then have this as 3 fifths multiplied by x to the minus 4, which is going to be 3x to the minus 4. Okay, and then the 5 down here. 3 fifths x to the minus 4. Or you could see this written as 3x to the minus 4 all over 5. Either way, it doesn't matter, they're both exactly the same. And again, in practice, you should be able to go from here straight down to here. Right, let's look at this one here, 5 root x. Introducing square roots now into our questions. 5 root x. Well, we can use this result here. When we've got the square root of x, it's as if n is 2. So we've got x to the power 1 over n, 1 over 2 in this case. So this is 5 times x to the power half, or just simply 5x to the power half. Now in this example, I'm having a number in the denominator. So we've got 4 multiplied by the cube root of x all over 5. And so because it's all over 5, we can think of this as 4 fifths. We can bring that 5 just slightly to the left. 4 fifths multiplied by the cube root of x, or just put 4 fifths cube root of x there. Cube root of x, what's that going to be? Well, again, by this theorem here, it's going to be 4 fifths x to the power 1 third. And then well, we could leave it like that, but sometimes it looks better just to put it all over the 5. All right? so instead of seeing it as 4 fifths x to the 3rd, we can think of it as 4x to the 3rd all over 5. Again, either way, it doesn't matter what you do here. It's still the same. Now, in this example, 3 over square root of x, I'm putting a root in the denominator here. 
So how do we see this? Well, it's a bit like doing this one here. We think of this as 3 multiplied by 1 over the square root of x. And 1 over the square root of x becomes equal to 3 times 1 over x to the power half by using this rule here. Square root of x is x to the half. So we've got 1 over x to the half. Now we can bring the x to the half up to the top by using this negative power rule and we get that this is 3 times x to the minus a half or 3x to the minus a half. And that's that one. And with this one here, all I've done is much the same as the one above here but put a number in the denominator. When you have a number in the denominator just make sure you leave it there. So we look at this as 3 fifths multiplied by 1 over the fourth root of x. Okay. Fourth root of x by this rule is x to the quarter so this becomes equal to 3 fifths multiplied by 1 over x to the power a quarter. And then by this rule here we can rewrite 1 over x to the power a quarter as x to the minus a quarter and then we've got 3 times x to the minus a quarter all over 5. Or you could rewrite this as just simply 3 fifths x to the minus a quarter. Still be exactly the same thing. And finally in this one this example is going to use this rule up here. I'll show you how. Here again we've got 2 over 5 multiplied by the fourth root of x cubed. But we think of this then as 2 fifths first of all multiplied by 1 over the fourth root of x cubed. So we've got our 2 fifths multiplied by 1 over and how can we write the fourth root of x cubed? Well we can use this rule on the bottom line here. The fourth root of x cubed is going to be x cubed to the power 1 over 4 or x to the 3 quarters. So we'll put that in as x to the power 3 quarters. Now bring the 3 quarters up to the top using this rule and essentially we have 2 fifths multiplied by x to the power minus 3 quarters. You can leave it like that or you could center that 5 in the denominator. And if you do that, 2x to the minus 3 quarters all over 5. Again, either way, it doesn't matter. Well, I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can simplify terms like this into the form ax to the power n. Okay.